and certification, but you have smaller valuable chunks which you can take away even if you haven't completed your degree. So, so and, and, and then this, this, uh, this uh, organization, Center for Law and Political Policy in the US, uh, has created this Alliance for Quality Career Pathways, which is really now trying for different professions in the US to map that out. Yeah? How could this new landscape uh, uh, look like? Very, very uh, interesting. Yeah, the OE Pass Initiative is doing this for Europe towards a European better connected credential ecosystem. That's uh, where we want to go. We are looking into building credential descriptors to, to describe them. That's what you also, you know, a little bit of that you will look into this afternoon uh, also. Um, and um, also we are thinking and discussing together with a different initiative, another initiative which is called Micro HE, which we are also running in parallel to this OE Pass initiative uh, to think about uh, how could you know you register this kind of, of things. You know, you have it in your pocket, but how can you, so to speak, uh, come to a system where you have an infrastructure around that, where you can hook into your credentials and then it can be recognized. Uh, for example, like an open voluntary credential registry, uh, for example. The stakeholders, and this is now a introducing more and more, more in depth into this ecosystem, uh, are the earners, the credential earners, uh, that's clear, the students, the learners, uh, the professionals. They are the credential issuers, that's the educational institutions, um, <coughs> educational institutions, training institutions, etc., etc. The credential consumers, <laughs> we, we say, so the, the, the labor market, for example, is, is a consumer of the credentials. And then the endorsers, and the endorsers are uh, having the role, so to speak, to um, to verify, to uh, validate the credentials. In higher education, these are often accreditation agencies. So that's uh, uh, um, yeah. That's my last slide already. Can you imagine? I'm very surprised. I thought it was much longer. But, <laughs> um, so. Uh, I told you about these two initiatives, Micro HE and OE Pass. They're running since uh, yeah, roughly a year, a bit less. Um, OE Pass is looking into credentials uh, of a small granularity. Okay? A small granularity. Something you learned somewhere. Yeah? Uh, and Micro HE is looking into, uh, yeah, we call it, we have to. St Thought about uh, the, the term into micro qualifications. You know? If you think about the European quality, qualification framework, you have a definition of qualifications there bachelor degrees, master degrees, doctoral programs, and so on. But there is nothing, uh, so to speak, to defined below these qualifications. And that's why we are advocating in micro HE to develop micro, a framework for micro qualifications uh, so that. Uh, also below, so to speak, qualifications, but above the very small granularity, so starting from five ECTS points onward, um, uh, uh, we want to develop uh, this framework for, for this kind of chess, so to speak. Of so these two initiatives, uh, keep them in mind. Uh, we are going to shake it a little bit. Um, and we are focusing on credentials in OE Pass. We want to create, create this kind of documentation possibility for Europe because so far we have LinkedIn and we don't want to leave this documentation, uh, let's say, mandate to a private company. We want to have a European infrastructure which is in the public uh, good hands, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah, and create a structure, category, metadata system, of course, uh, facilitating recognition. So that's the introduction, and now I would uh, probably hand back to. Yeah, thank you very much, Charles. Just before we move on to Anthony, bear in mind that author has to go in about 15 minutes. If yes. you have any questions or comments, now would be the time to make them. Let's <laughs> we have one over there. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sanson from the University of Leeds. Thank you for that. Excellent. Uh, uh, the, the problem I, no, no, the, problem, the big problem I see with uh, this is that uh, we've already had the uh, European degree.
free supplement. And that's also been, it's been a piece of that paper. It's costing students more money. Uh, so that doesn't give me a very good feeling that at the European level, this is going to happen. The, the problem I see is that the universities don't accept these credentials in their own country. So if, if the university gives me this credential, they won't say that inside the same university, this is proof that I have the degree. They make me apply for the ministry degree. So I mean, this is, you know, this is, there's a lot in Spain. It's a big hill to climb. It's a big hill to climb. What, 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 we are, what we are thinking about, and maybe actually you can say some things about that as well, is um, actually what you're describing, this recognition processes, these are actually administrative processes. And we have the vision that we can facilitate these processes uh, much better through a technological infrastructure. That's, I didn't talk about that today at all, uh, but um, that, that's behind these initiatives as well. Uh, to create a, um, a blockchain-based credentialing that. infrastructure for I understand that, obviously, technically it's quite yeah. possible, but there yeah. are very big interests, yeah, right. interests yeah. to keep yeah. the system we have now. Yeah. Right. yeah, I just wanted to add on that. I mean, we're going to discuss it later on, but in the very end, the key aspect is trust. And in order to increase the trust for recognition, you need to work on certain standards, and you need to speak to a certain extent the language of credential evaluators at higher education institutions. We're going to discuss it later. I mean, it has happened before. It, I mean, it is. If you look at MOOC platforms, if you look at look at edX, if you look at Coursera, if you look at FutureLearn, all of them are currently developing what you're saying. They're developing like open education-based micro qualifications, micro master, whatever it's called, that can become parts of degrees within these institutions. That already is a major step to compare to the very beginnings of massive open online education. And what has also developed is that step by step, um, providers of open educational opportunities are looking more and more into the quality criteria for these opportunities. Mm -hmm. Which means you need to be able to translate it into the formal systems that you're talking about. And that's what we're doing in order to have like this catalyst for increasing trust. In the end, it's all about increasing trust. For that, you need to speak their language, you need to know it's difficult, and it is seen as a threat at, at many institutions, but you need to take especially those along who are already piloting it throughout Europe and worldwide um, in order to have like the broad range. And I think the European Commission is very interested in, in you know, further extending such approaches. And we believe that we shouldn't look at it as a problem, but you know, as an opportunity that has to be further developed, knowing that it's not something we can we can solve today, but we can maybe solve within the next five years having more flexible pathways. I'm very much in favor of it, don't get me wrong. But I would like it to be a European directive for the commission to say to universities, the game is over, you have to comply. Yeah. Because that's the incremental approach. It's going to be difficult. But That's before you present possible. it to the commission, you actually have to do the research. Yeah. Yeah. Chicken and the egg. No, but either way, at commission level, that can never happen because uh, <laughs> simply enough, the commission doesn't have competence in education to issue directives. So, just one word. The first step is creating mutual agreements between universities to accept courses finished somewhere else. Okay. And there are some initiatives to do that in Danish universities. behind the uh, five ECTS uh, micro-credential 
it's, it's much work already, yeah? 150 hours of work, yeah? Why not, uh, and it, this is more than the usual course at university uh, of one semester. So, so what's the logic there behind? Well, we have this luxury situation that we have two projects, two initiatives, going past in migration. Going past is looking into everything under, below five, and migration roughly, and everything and um, the idea was that we were thinking we don't want to break the for a micro AG for this above five ECTS. The idea was we don't want to, so to speak, uh, powder up higher education, but we would like first now to start with chunks which are up to 30 ECTS, like these nano degrees from LX or from, from Coursera or so, uh, and try to see how does it work with them. And five ECTS is already quite low if you think about you modularize your 180 ECTS bachelor into chunks of five and you can have them recognized and portable and reconfigurable <coughs> into new situations. It's, it's already quite, quite challenging. But maybe then, if we manage, we will do the you know, That's the answer to the question. <laughs> Okay, thank you very yeah, much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Professor Anthony, okay, so uh, of the course today, we're going to be looking at two different aspects linked to credentials. Uh, unfortunately, we're starting with the slightly duller of the two, uh, but I will try. But essentially, what we're looking into is before you go and build tech and systems for credentials, you actually need to understand what a credential is and what a quality credential is, so that you can reflect that in the requirements. And when we started the OE pass part of the project, though the names of the projects aren't really important for us, what we started with is that people have been working on this problem for a long time in Europe. I mean, you're familiar with all the keywords on the board, ECTS, European Standards and Guidelines for Quality Assurance, Diploma Supplements, European Qualification Frameworks. I mean, every couple of years, we seem to be inventing like a new recognition tool. But all those recognition tools actually have been created for a very, very tiny part of education. They're created for traditional higher education and for essentially experiences of a year or more. As soon as you get under that, even though maybe some of the principles behind this could work, none of the tools were actually designed to do that. And so, when we look at the open educational providers, the MOOC providers, the edXs, the Corsairs of this world, they looked at what existed and just said, listen, this isn't working for us, and they basically started inventing their own credentials. Uh, they don't use ECTS, they don't use EQ and so on and so forth. And so one of the things we are realizing is that the differences between formal education, non-formal education, informal, between a certified, between an accredited qualification, all of these are becoming less clear and they're becoming a little bit fuzzier. So to some extent, the logic behind our project is that we should use some of this fuzziness to our advantage. Simply enough, if you look at the principles behind, say, the diploma supplement, which you mentioned, let's make the learning, which was achieved, clear by some more document. Let's look at ECTS, the principle is modularization of education. Let's look at EQF, which is a common language for credentials. These principles can actually be applied at different levels of education, and can be applied for different types of education if we just choose to extend them and take them out of the higher education bubble to some extent. So the project is based on five steps. First of all, figuring out what a quality credential is, which is what we'll be talking about this morning. Secondly, enhancing the transparency of credentials by creating a learning passport. And our idea of a learning passport is basically the same kind of thing, you could call it a diploma supplement on steroids. Um, something that is highly automated and also highly informative and that works at different levels of education. Then, because we say that we want to automate, we figure out the tech behind this, 
and we also figure out some of the metadata and so on that go into it. The final part of it is then the policy aspect. If we're going to enable micro-credentials, if we're going to, let's say, promote these alternative forms of credentials, that's going to bring a significant amount of entropy to education systems. And so we wanted to do a little bit of for just forecasting to actually understand what the effect of this would be to higher education institutions and how they might be able to adapt by that. This is the quick list of partners that's taking part. And what's interesting to see here is you have a mixture of consultancies, non-profit foundations, universities, and networks who are all working together on this problem. So it brings together quite an interesting set of perspectives that work on this. So, we were talking about credentials and types of credentials. These are some of the words you will find bandied around these days. Uh, nano degrees, micromasters, badges, licenses, endorsements. And the interesting thing is, even though universities are supposedly institutions that are in the business of offering degrees, you find universities offering all of these as well. And when you ask them, are these part of your standard offering, the answer is usually that it's somewhere in the gray zone. Nobody's really quite sure the status of these things within institutions. And the other part of this is that a lot of these terms are also linked to particular technologies. So on one part they seem to be a standard, but on the other part they seem to be a technology, and there's sometimes some confusion about what exactly the credential is. So coming to this, and this was already explained by Wolf, we come with the definition of a credential. And this definition is quite important because it sets the basis for the whole quality system. And that is that a credential is simply enough a documented statement. It's a documented statement, from one person to another, saying this person knows something. And it's used for the purposes of gaining access to whatever you want to gain access to. If you look at this specifically in the realm of educational credentials, the diagram you show, saw before from Wolf was, let's say, all credentials of any type, anything from press credentials to education. But if we look specifically at educational credentials, then what you see the, that is that there's essentially four types of commonly used ones. You've got the formal qualifications, and that's really the bread and butter of universities and of accredited educational institutions. They're awards at the end of a formal educational experience with a formal exam that leads to a formal certificate. And the European Qualifications Framework and all these recognition tools are essentially in this box. But you've got another three which we need to think about. You've got non-formal certificates, which are effectively the ones that are offered at the end of a non-formal course with some kind of assessment, but the assessment isn't necessarily an examination. You've got recognition of skills. Typical example is language proficiency exams. I can speak Swahili, and you give me an exam to certify my Swahili degrees. And then you have records of experience, which basically are certificates of participation without any assessment or checks or money hires. And this is a, the entire ecosystem of educational credentials. And within that, we actually did a mapping of, let's say, different credentials offered by different institutions around Europe. And I mean, we stopped the list at 200. So uh, there is a very, very wide variety of, let's say, credentials offered within those four categories. Now, the purpose of credentials, then, is recognition and portability. You want the person you present the credential to, to recognize that credential. That's why you have it. Um, you, there's also a side purpose that you can put it on the wall and look at it, but generally the purpose of a credential is to be able to share it with somebody and have them recognize what's written in that. And so, in terms of just an overall quality indicator for credentials, we would argue to you that the higher the recognition and portability, the higher the quality of the credential. Very, very simple question. Um, the simplicity of that though shows a lot of complexity. So 
Traditionally, a credential statement has been evaluated in terms of the quality of learning it represents and of the elements it consists of. And this is based on work of, first of all, Ludwig, which is the Dutch recognition agency, as well as of Gabby Mathaus, who is sometimes at these conferences. And what you find here is saying that, listen, to have a good quality credential, it has to describe the learning outcomes, it has to describe the quality assurance system, the EQF level, the workload, the methods of assessment, the identity of the learner, and the identity of the issuer. And you check each of these things, and then you see if that's actually valid. And that is considered to be a quality credential. And <coughs> while this is useful for recognition purposes when you know the other credentials, we would like to postulate to you that these elements have quality systems behind them. And the example I like to give is let's take a quality statement. I, Anthony Camilleri, owe you one million euros. Now, if I write it in a contract that has that is a known quantity, it has a certain legal status, it is signed by a lawyer that has a certain education and a professional license and so on, that contract has a certain value. If I take the exact statement and write it on a napkin in a restaurant, I owe you one million dollars, would these two have the same recognition status? There's actually some really interesting law cases about ones written on this, but the answer is generally this is, has less value than this. Even though the statement is the 